And we're back at Hobart's Boswell Field for the second half of this game, a game that sees Syracuse and Hobart all knotted up at halftime at 6-6. Six, six. This game being played on the natural grass surface. There has been no rain, although there was rain apparently yesterday, and the field is slippery in certain spots. Uh, Greg, to recap it, as you saw it, how did it go in the first half? Well, it seemed like uh, really Hobart, although we are even after the first uh, two quarters of play, Dave, it seemed like Hobart was playing more of their game in the Orange for the first time in many weeks, really maybe the first time since the North Carolina game in the, uh, the very first game of the year. The Orange are not playing their game. Tim Nelson has not been a factor. According to our stats, he has just one assist in the game. So really, the uh, Hobart Statesman have done a good job. In particular, our viewers should look for number 44 in the second half. He did such a good job, uh, Nelson, in the first half. I'm talking about Devin Arkison as we get a look at the shots and the first half stats. Things evened up a little bit later in the half. The Orange were down at one stage, 15-5 to five in shots on goal, Dave, and really not getting a lot of offensive pressure on the uh, Hobart net. Each team, uh, as you can see, had one man up goal, and Syracuse dominated the faceoffs 11 to 3, but then uh, they were not able to do much with the ball after they uh, took possession off the faceoff. So now we get set for 30 more minutes of lacrosse. Syracuse 6 and Hobart 6. The Orange men with an undefeated season on the line, and Hobart seeking revenge, seeking to avenge their only loss of the year. A 15 to 10 defeat at the hands of Syracuse in the Champions Day game at Manhasset back earlier this spring. 6-6 six, six, Syracuse and Hobart as we resume and we might point out that like the championship game a year ago Syracuse stayed on the field at halftime. Right. Of course as we begin second half action the nation's longest winning streak is on the line 13 games the Orange have in a row. Brad Cotts wins it from Pat O'Hara here we go Cotts in the first half scored uh, three goals. Nelson setting up behind the net here's that duo again Arkison and Nelson it was a shot last Man to it was uh, Syracuse's Randy uh, Tim Nelson, so the Orangemen will retain possession. There's Tim. No goals in the first half. Mm. Syracuse, a poor pass again. Now here comes Cotts. Credit the defense of Hobart for slowing down the Syracuse offense. Hard shot, score! Well, a rare long distance shot by Syracuse and the score. I believe it was Todd Curry, Dave, who got it. And he let a good shot either here or Cotts. I believe Curry, number 16, will be the goal scorer. We'll get a chance to see it again. As uh, that's Curry up top with it. And he'll just come in, make a little move back. Guy goes down. We've seen a lot of guys slip on this field today, Dave. And it is uh, attributed a couple of goals. Curry's first of the day. And for the first time since the first quarter, the Orange have the lead. Their last lead in the game was a 2-1. to one. Greg, and uh, now here we are, 32 seconds into the second half. And that was a good indication of how the ball can skip off a natural grass field. And here comes Eric Jeske. Syracuse in the early stages scored two goals in less than a minute. Now Nelson with a feed, Scott score. Nelson to Corian, just that quickly. Syracuse has put two on the board in 13 seconds here of the second half. Well, whatever Coach Simmons and his staff were talking about on that field during the halftime, Dave, seems to have worked because lightning has struck quickly as Jeske makes a nice drop pass to Nelson, takes a hit, stays on his feet, and Corey opens up along the side of the cage. And number 48 there for the statesman, Mike Martin, left Corey just for a moment. And Nelson, who seems at times to have eyes in the back of his head, spotted the move and quickly made the pass. To open the game, Syracuse scored a pair of goals in 24 seconds. And here in the second half, two goals within 13 seconds. And it's Syracuse 8 and Hobart 6. And this equals the largest lead Syracuse has had. Well, what had happened in the first half, Dave, Hobart did not become unglued. They remained composed, came back, got the next two goals to tie it up. So we'll see what happens this time. That was definitely the key that they came back after that quick two goal lead by Syracuse and they came back by really going to a deliberate offensive style we'll see if they do that here with Grimaldi behind the net Tom Grimaldi did not score in the first half he's matched up with Jeff Desco 27 bounce shot and the save by Nims who comes out and plays it Nims spills over the back line Sheehan cross field and Syracuse looks uh, much better in terms of organization here as Pratt carries it across rolls it ahead and Syracuse now into the attacking zone. Lundblad behind the cage to Nelson. The feed. That was Pratt in close looking for the shot attempt with a big stick. 
And did they call him in the crease? Yes, it's a procedure call against Syracuse. Goes over to Holberg. But the Orange look much better in the second half. Early they seem to be playing now their game as they got the ball behind the cage to Nelson. Walt Munsey gives the call. He was in the crease, so the ball goes over to Hobart at midfield. Marty Wood is 27. Quite a contrast in the goalie styles. Uh, the two goalies on the field, Chuck Warren of Hobart, much more stationed, and of course, Nims all over the place today. Mark Van Arsdale, he likes to work from behind the cage, matched up with Sheehan. And here comes Grimaldi setting the pick and the roll. Van Arsdale takes the inside move again. Nims cut him off. Now Grimaldi. This is the area of the field where it's wet. Grimaldi working against Jeff Desco. Look how they lean and shove one another. Good job by Jeff Desco and Nims comes out to play it. Desco goes back and he handles it now. Grimaldi in the crease area. Fred Cambria, number 29, I believe that was in there. Now the Syracuse Orangemen at midfield with Todd Curry. It's been Curry and Corey here in the third quarter at Syracuse leads 8-6. Right in front of the official, it's a delayed call. So Syracuse can do something here before they stop the play, and now they do. Man up situation coming. The Orange have uh, one goal on the day as the holding call was right in front of the official, and we'll get a chance to see it as well as he did momentarily. Number 27, Collars. That's Marty Wood with the uh, infraction. He'll sit off for a moment. One minute the penalty and the Orange will go on offense. Neither club has led by more than two goals in the game. In fact, Hobart's never led by more than one. The Orange at one point led two zip and now at eight to six. You're watching it on Cable 13 Sports, your Syracuse lacrosse station and the leader in local sports programming. Lundblad, here's Cuts. Oh, great save by Warren off the high hard one. Now Syracuse again behind the net. Nelson where he's so tough. Corey on one side. Desco on the other. Here's Corey shoots and scores. Well, he went with the submarine shot. And Syracuse with three in a row now leads it nine to six. Good to see it happen because Corey's been quiet today and he got a one-on-one a -on -one situation with the goalie Warren. Nelson makes it happen by really attracting everybody's eyes and Arkansas contracting on uh, Nelson opens up for Corey, of course, see along with Emmett Printup have the biggest shots on this club. That's the Indian shot. Shoot that riser at the goaltender, and uh, Warren is a little fellow too, so that one's coming up and going beyond him. He's 5 8. And Syracuse now leads it 9 6. Hobart uses three midfields regularly, and they have today. So it's not a case of depth or lack of it from Hobart's standpoint. Dave Desco, 26, back to Tom Nims. 11 and a half to play, third quarter. The biggest lead of the game for Syracuse. The Orangemen, nine, and the Hobart Statesman, six. Here's Desco again to Brad Cotts. Ducks under one check, rides off another, passes in close. Nobody there, that's a pass, not a shot, so Hallbright gets it. Doesn't seem like he's too happy with the last play by Kotz is looking for Nelson along the right side of the cage. Hobart will take over. Have to see how the statesmen react now, down by three goals. Dan Whalen in front to Chuck Warren. Lundblad is gonna try to uh, pesker them. Crossfield to Whalen. Off the double team, he gets it ahead to Arkison. Hobart keeps the complement of players on side. Here comes Arkison, a rear offensive foray, and he scores. Well, we've been marveling at his defensive work all day, Dave, but for a moment there, he shows us some offensive brilliance. No one will come and play him at all. The big stick defenseman bounces one by Nims. His first goal of the day, and for Arkison on the year, that's his very first goal of the season. So he's played well defensively on Nelson, at least he did in the first half, and right there he has the statesman uh, within two. Tommy Nims uh, looked surprised to see Arkinson shoot it. 
I think everybody on the orange defense is waiting for him to make a pass and he never made the pass and just walked it in and soloed it. Now the face off O'Hara on the right. Brad Cox on the left and one time they were teammates at Syracuse. Orange have had a big advantage as far as the face off goes of course Cox one of the better face off men in the country. They'll lose that one. And they were also high school teammates. O'Hara with a face now 10 and a half minutes remaining. Jim Hollihan 23 at Syracuse 9 and Hobart 7. Weak shot and Nims gathers it in. Now Cots racing against O'Hara gets the step on him. Cots fires and it's wide a war in their foot race to the ball. Syracuse keeps it. Spent a lot of energy making the move and when he got in time for the shot he had nothing left to let a good one go. But the goalie Warren did a good job of giving him little to shoot at and we're not a whole lot of orangemen around for him to make a pass to. Nelson to Eric Jeschke in the game. Played by Sean Fox number 10. Now Burnham cuts toward the cage. Here comes Jeschke into the box. Dishing it to Lundblad. Corey look how they move the ball mm. quickly and it ends up in a John Schmoller goal. That was beautiful stick work by Syracuse. Much better play in the second half offensively for the Orange. First goal of the game for John Schmoller. He's been quiet today offensively as Jeschke makes the pass. Now Corey feeds it inside and Schmoller over the top beats Warren. A lot of the Orange goals have come on the right side of the net. Or pardon me, the left side of the net where Mike Martin, they saw a senior defenseman from Cortland High School as Manning. They seem to be attacking his side of the defensive back line. That must be a set play the way that's choreographed it goes inside outside inside outside and then it ends up in the net. Just beautiful stick work. Marty Wood now for Hobart the statesman again down by three ten to seven. Biggest margin either team has enjoyed in the game has been three. There's Marty Woods off the spin move deflected on the pass. Still in bounds in the corner. And now somebody is out of bounds. Billy Orange Kerr. Order. Billy Kerr stepped down, number 25, so Syracuse gets it. It's been almost two different games, first half and second. The Orange really have outplayed Hobart in the second half and territorially and possession wise they've had the ball most of the time. Kevin Sheehan he's from Baldwinsville. Tommy Nims West Genesee. Brad Cotts uh, make that Mike O'Donnell separated from the ball by Dan Whalen out of Bishop Ludden. Now Van Arsdale and Curry will battle and Curry gets it. But here comes Whalen back for Hobart. Good ground level look as Whalen goes down, and this will be a call against Syracuse. I believe Dave Desco got a little bit overly aggressive there. He'll be sitting down for one minute. On the trip, official Terry Cullen smiling at whatever Desco had to say to him. Well, he made up his mind he was going to stop the. Uh, well I think what happened there was that he made a legal check on the stick and their feet got tangled. He hit him stick on stick. So Hobart gets it here is O'Hara. Down to Bergen. Bergen has one goal in the game and Arsdale has two. Allahan has not scored neither is Grimaldi. Allahan is 23. And he gets it again. Romaldi is number 12. There's that double stack. Bergen. Grimaldi. They overthrew O'Hara. Bergen had a shot to field it cleanly. And now here's Van Arsdale. There's Grimaldi make the pass. Grimaldi in close. It's wide. As Cambria and Nims forced him to alter his shot. Grimaldi again. Out to the point, hit the crossbar, rebound score. O'Hara on the rebound. And you knew 
that one was coming. Just a matter of time. Way Hobart was buzzing around the orange net, and they had a lot of good chances. And finally, it capped off after the ball hit the uh, crossbar, it bounced right back out. And the lead is down to two as we see a lot of good action coming up. Van Arsdale blast one. The rebound is stuffed in by O'Hara. Pat O'Hara, a senior from West Jenny High School. It was O'Hara who gets the goal. Now here comes Zadel back for West, uh, for uh, Hobart. A shot. Nims comes way out of the cage. A Hobart player may have stepped in. Van Arsdale. Well, the flag is down. No, it's going to be a slashing call. Slashing call on the orange, I believe, and we get a piece of extra well, equipment. This is the uh, the trout capital of the world, right? That's right, Lake Trout capital. And uh, one has been tossed onto the playing area. Ten to eight. Syracuse lead. There's Desco. O'Hara. Desco's gone off from uh, one minute for slashing, Dave. Are you a fisherman? No, as a matter of fact, no. But around this area, it is so beautiful and scenic, uh, I almost feel like going out. Memorial Day is the uh, weekend for the big uh, late trout derby that's held here annually. Mm. Hobart in white, Syracuse in orange. O'Hara with the fake, intending for Bergen. This is a pass, not a shot, and Syracuse will get it. Now the Orange will have a good chance to salt away this penalty on Desco. Fred Cambry, you see him sprinting upfield now as Dave Desco comes on. Kevin Sheehan, 28. And back we go. Orange are now at full strength. Desco going by Bergen. And what's the call here? Could it be on Bergen? We'll wait and see. Official Terry Cullen. He's going to give us uh, his assessment of the situation momentarily. It is against Bill Bergen, the man who was uh, providing the ride as Syracuse came upfield. Must have been slashing. Didn't hear the call, but wasn't a whole lot of action there. 7.09 to play, third quarter. Here's Brad Cotts. Cots on the day has scored three times. So has Corey. Curry has one. Lundblad has one. Schmoller has one. And now Tim Nelson. Intending for brother Tom who missed the ball and got a shove. Corey battles in there. It's still loose. And Syracuse gets it. And the shot is not taken by Lundblad. Harkison has it. Hobar did a good job of stuffing Lundblad's shot. Conti was open a little bit back if Nelson could have made a deeper pass. Another defenseman. Oh, nice save by Nims, and he comes out. And he spins away. And he brings it across the midfield line. Is he going to take a shot? It's a pass down close. Nelson the feed. And a great save in close by Warren against Lundblad. Excellent play. Chuck huh. Warren comes out of there now. This is some of the finest action of the game. Brad Cox on the steal from Zadel. Ahead to Curry and back to Cox. Now down low to Lundblad. Behind the cage, it's Corey. Corey intending for Tom Nelson. Overrun by Lundblad. Overrun by Hobart. Stick lost by Syracuse. And here's Corey. Curry working and gets the pipe. Now it's uh, Mark Moore coming back for Hobart. Not going to get better action than this right now. Down goes Curry. Cross field is Zadel. Scott Zadel, an attack man out of Smithtown, Long Island. Thought for a moment Nims is going to go all the way and take that shot. Of course, Travis Solomon got one last year. The goalkeeper. Dave Ralph in the game now. Ralph is a freshman from Yorktown. That's the school that has given Syracuse the Nelson brothers 23 apiece on the shots. They have evened up in a hurry after Hobart uh, early in the game at a 15-5 edge. 
Now here's Moore coming in. He shoots and Nims is down low for the save. And the quick outlet to Cots, who cradles it at midfield. Knocked away from behind by Whalen. Whalen gets it on the stick of O'Hara. Back we come. And it's out of bounds, so we'll wait on the possession call. It goes to Syracuse. Four minutes and 29 seconds to play. Third quarter, Syracuse 10, Hobart 8. Well, we'd like to hear your reactions to our coverage of Syracuse lacrosse. Drop us a line at Rogers Cable Systems, 500 South Salina Street, Syracuse, New York. The zip is 13202. In fact, you can write us about uh, any sports coverage you've seen or would like to see here on Cable 13. Mike O'Donnell, number 31, in digging for Syracuse. And we get a stoppage of play. Hobart has dominated the faceoffs here in the third quarter, 4 to 2. Ben Arkison, that last time, dominated his battle with Tim Nelson. All over Nelson out front, and he took the ball away, and Hobart will regain possession. Next goal, really a crucial goal in this game with the Orange hanging on to that two goal lead. Jim Hollihan, 23. Fred Cambria pokes the big stick at him. And Cambria is still on him. Dan Pratt broke up that pass. Here's Bergen. Gets it to O'Hara. Behind the cage now. Number 14 is uh, Mike Bonaventura. And now Grimaldi played by Sheehan. Grimaldi gets loose inside. Nims is there for the save. And there's a man in the crease after the shot. Tom Nims rising to the occasion. Well, he's played an excellent, excellent game with the 23 shots the statesmen have on him. And we resume play now. Brad Short and Todd Curry. Here's Curry. He has one of the Syracuse goals here in the third quarter. Checked away by Sean Fox. Inside the score by Syracuse. Tim Nelson. Well, they made something out of nothing, and Tim Nelson has his first goal of the game. It is now Syracuse 11 and Hobart 8. A couple of times in the day, things have worked out well for him as the move comes inside by Curry, and there's Nelson to clean it up around the net. First goal of the game for Nelly, and the Orange have their three-goal lead back. For Nelson on the year now, 17 goals. Second on the club, Corey has three today and has 24 on the year. Four different orange men have scored here in the third quarter. Curry, Schmoller, Nelson, and Corey who has a pair. And now it's uh, Dave Desco in control. Billy Kerr is on him. Desco, bounce shot. And Nelson is there to play, and he takes a shot on the head. A couple of players go down. Stoppage of play, Syracuse will keep it. New midfield coming on now for Hobart. Sean Fox comes on along with their Gordy Sweeley. Here is Desco, played by Sweeley. Those two are still matched up. Desco in and out of trouble. Now cuts to Nelson. Those two have had trouble today in their passing linkups. Two guys were on Nelson, Arkinson, and Martin. Open man is Lundblad. He shoots and he scores. Tim Nelson found him, and Randy Lundblad got nothing but net. Seem a little overly concerned with Nelson behind the net, and both Arkinson and Martin. Arkinson on him there, and Martin coming back late. Lundblad makes a great move inside. And you see the pick nice, that nice Curry screen. the screen. Excellent. And that really. Uh, prevented the goaltender from getting a good look at where the shot was coming from until well, it was too late. Also opened it up inside and lost Wayland. A lot of times those goals are scored by things created away from the ball as Dave just pointed out. Now Syracuse with their biggest lead of the game at 12 to 8. This is Mark Burnham. He's matched up with Schmoller and Jeske in the second Syracuse midfield. He's in no hurry. 
Nelson behind the cage is calling out the play. Here comes Burnham. Now to Jeske. Bounce shot. Back to play it is Nelson to Syracuse retains possession. Working with a comfort margin now of four goals. Just about all facets of the game, Dave. The Orange have thoroughly outplayed Hobart here in the third corner after a very tight first half. The clubs, of course, were even at halftime. But even it's been a different one. story. Even after even one. Even after one, 4-4 four, four and 6-6 six, six and a half. Nelson against Arkansas. He gets away, but Arkansas does another fine job of harassing him. Arkansas has it now. Now the tables are turned. Nelson on Arkansas. Good steal. Nobody in the net. And how did Warren ever get back to make the stop? Out of midair, he just snagged the ball. Randy Lundblad had the open cage, and Howard came back, and he stopped it. And we get a little uh, pushing and shoving now. This is something that is uh, not new to this rivalry. Well, definitely the save of the day was made just moments ago by Chuck Warren as he was badly caught behind the net, was able to recover in time and somehow get his goalie stick on that shot by Lundblad. Sensational effort. Now watch it. There's the steal by Lundblad. And nobody around oh. to help Warren. And in one motion, he was able to get that stick on the ball and snag it out of minute. That ball was heading for the net. That's really a guess by the goaltender because he doesn't know where the man is shooting for, and he just put it out there. And he'll take that one for sure. That's, That's right. a very, very big save. If that goes in, the Orange have a five-goal lead. One minute and 36 seconds remaining now, third quarter. You know, this game is reminiscent of the first game. Syracuse had a 10 to 7 lead and they ran off five in a row. After uh, a 10 7 lead here, Syracuse has outscored Hobart 2 to 1. Corey's off one minute day for slashing, so Hobart has a man up situation. With a minute 20 to work with third quarter. Van Arsdale, 43. He's been quiet since the early going. They could have to say their whole offense has been quiet since the early going. There's that double stack they use again. It's really a decoy, I think, to take a couple of defensive players out of the congestion. Jeff Desco, the big stick, broke it up. Well, he's played a strong game on defense. Here's Dan Pratt ahead. And now to Burnham and back to Nelson. Back at full strength, Corey has returned to the field. The bottom of your picture. Circus does a lot of talking out on the field and you might have seen a player just then indicate to Nelson that Corey was coming on and he threw it to uh, Tom Corey. Now Eric Jeske is on. Orange will play for the last shot here of the half with 30 seconds to play, or pardon me, the third quarter with 30 seconds to go. Eric Jeske will run it as the clock is down to 25 now. Fake right and go left. And now down to 15 seconds. Got to make a pass in a hurry. Mark Burnham doesn't get a pick to work with. Nearly ran into that man on the field who's telling the officials how much time is remaining. Here's Corey with an avenue, and he scores! Into the slot with one second to go in the third quarter. Really didn't think they'd have time to get it. Burnham looks like he trapped himself along the right side in the corner with 10, but he got it back to Corey, and individually, He'll lose the defender, Hollahan, come in, and as he does so well, lets the big shot go. Maybe the hardest shot in all of lacrosse. Corey now with four goals on the day. That'll give him a team high 25 on the year. He scored, of course, six last week in the win over Harvard. That matches his output in the first game when he scored four against Hobart in the game down at Geneva, uh, game down at Manhasset. And that's the third quarter. What a quarter it was for the Orangemen. Well, uh, we had a chance to uh, chat with Tom Corey's parents during lunch before this game, and like many of the parents of the Syracuse players, they travel to all the games they can, and they're enjoying this, obviously, especially the play of their son, Tom. The end of three here at Geneva, Syracuse 13 and Hobart 8. Big crowd, big crowd on hand in a scenic location on the banks of Geneva Lake. Well, 15 minutes to go, and it almost becomes a, a desperate situation for Hobart as we get a look at the orange huddle. They had a very productive halftime chat on the field there as they are, have done occasionally. Staying on the field during the halftime and making their preparations for the third quarter, and it seemed to work. As we'll get a glance now at what happened through the first three quarters. The Orange, who were down 15 to 5 in shots and were 
Really outshot early in the game by a wide margin have come back now and have three more shots on Chuck Warren than the statesmen have on Tom Nims. Face offs the Orange have had a decisive advantage throughout the game in man up situations the Orange have scored twice off of and the statesmen have just one. So just 15 minutes to play in the game now and the statesmen find themselves down by five at the end of one quarter it was four four at the end of two quarters it was six six and in that third quarter of play the Orangemen really went to work outscoring the statesmen by a seven to two margin and Tom Corey was a big goal scorer in that third quarter now has four on the day. Greg I was a geography minor in college at Syracuse and I want to correct myself that's Seneca Lake. Seneca Lake. I don't know why Greg. I kept saying Geneva. Geneva Lake. Well we're in Geneva New York obviously. That's right. Uh, that's right. I know I think I said it earlier also but that is of course Seneca Lake. One of the Finger Lakes. Next Friday night we'll be in the Carrier Dome where we don't have to worry about no lakes, lakes there. <laughs> and you'll see Cortland State and Syracuse. Maybe that'll save somebody writing a letter. A lot of fishermen aren't going to be happy with that. I also know I can only trust Karen Ryan for uh, stats on the game and not a geographical <laughs> correction. Lake Geneva is in Wisconsin, isn't it? I didn't know one. That's pretty far away. All right, it's Syracuse 13 and Hobart 8. Biggest lead of the game for Syracuse. Fourth quarter action. And the Orangemen in no hurry right here. Here's Brad Cotts being played by Mike Elliott. Now Nelson comes away from the uh, cage area. Nelson draws the double team. Todd Curry battles to keep possession in the hands of Syracuse. Kicked ahead by 38 Gordy Sweeley. And now Arkison has played one heck of a game for Hobart. Dan Whalen switching hands. Feeding intended there for Reagan who wanted to get a jump shot on goal. Cambria backs in. And Syracuse gets it with uh, O'Donnell. Now Nims. Jeff Desco, 27. And Mark Burnham. Nice feed to Jeske with a head of steam. Jeske cuts to the cage. Lundblad. And he missed the angle as Warren came off and really cut it down. Whole play was made possible by a great pass by Mark Burnham to Jeske. Jeske had a lot of open field and Burnham really had his back to him, spun around and spotted them and made that quick pass. But you mentioned the play of Arkison today. On the other side, the Orange have gotten just outstanding defense from Jeff Deschke, their sophomore uh, defender. Here comes Nelson, double teamed. Now Whalen and Nims. Syracuse 13, Hobart 8. We've got 13 minutes remaining. This is uh, Devin Arkison. He is only a freshman, 6'1", 190 pounder out of Summit, New Jersey. Well, Holbert's got to go to work in a hurry here down by five. Dan Pratt broke up that clearing opportunity and now here comes Bergen. Cambria trying to play defense, getting back. Here's Hobart in close. Van Arsdale to Bergen, winds up for the left-handed shot and he scores. Second goal of the game for Bill Burden. Only had three on the year before today, now has five. Leads down to four, he's played well. Really was the guy who spurned on the offense as Van Arsdale gets bottled up. Bergen just switches sides, lets a bounce shot go. I bet you five or six of the goals that have beaten Nims have come off the bounce. And the bounce here on the natural grass is certainly a different bounce than it gets on the carpet at the dome. Syracuse did practice all week out on the natural grass fields at Collindale. Harkison has one goal in the game and he's brings it across the midfield line again. I don't know if Harkison has had uh, many rest periods in this contest. He has been a marathon man and he's done a great job in keeping Tim Nelson under wraps. Pat O'Hara, number 20. Bounce shot, score! 
surprising ground ball shot and he scores and Hobart is within three. Well, nobody expected him to let that thing go, and especially Tom Nims. He was just fooled entirely on the shot. He used uh, SU defender as a screen. Don't a go away play. yet. Don't go away because this one has the potential for going right down to the wire. Two quickies like that. And the way the Orange began quarter number three, Hobart begins quarter number four, and we have a good game again. And now it is John Schmoller going down to a knee on the wet turf. He's being poked at by Marty Wood. Syracuse is in the orange, Hobart in the white. Here's Jeschke. And this is Mark Burnham. Good fake and go against Vivian. John Schmoller, the Syracuse second midfield out there now. Oh, Marty Wood up high. No call. Shot save Warren. Corey in for the rebound. Now Lundblad. Can he keep it in bounds? Hobart ball. Good working by Lundblad, but he was by himself against two statesmen. And it went off of his stick and rolled out. So the shift in momentum stays in favor of Hobart. With 11 minutes, 22 seconds to play, and Syracuse's lead of five shaved down to three. The statesman coming up deliberately. First Mike. time in the game, they're bringing their goalie Warren way out of the cage. Force down by three, the time is now. Here's Whalen. Corey is there to play him. So they go back to the goalie and they'll try the other side of the field. This is Martin, number 48. Syracuse picking up all across the field now. And here comes Whalen. Now they get it across. Billy Kerr, 25. Dan Pratt trying to get back to him. 27 is Marty Wood. Wound up, fake, now he shoots and it's wide. Nim's got it last, but Hobart keeps it. Marty Wood had an open shot there for a moment, but a good defensive play by the Orange's Kevin Sheehan. We may have a penalty coming up here on the Orange. Or check that, I believe it's gonna be on the Statesman. Marty Wood let the shot go. They say pushed off and that is a now Desco's beefing a little bit, so we'll wait and see. Dave Yurick has the number 16 windbreaker on. Terry Cullen is the official who is uh, dishing out the penalties. Well, they're Marty restraining Wood. Marty Wood. He's quite hot. He's the guy who took the shot after Sheehan confronted them, and they may have got him on a push, and it looks like he will be sitting off for some period here. Yes, the passions run high when Syracuse and Hobart get together. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike Didn't quite see what he did after he took the shot. He must have done something, though. Another pushed one of the Orangemen after the ball landed out of bounds. This is a full one minute penalty. Go, Chucky! Non releasable. Good shot for the Orange to go back up by four here. Big transaction. Syracuse has the big guns out. They've got both Nelson brothers. Dave Desco, Corey, Lundblad. There's Randy. There's Tim Nelson. Corey's in front of the cage. There's Desco with a shot. Warren saved it. It's loose in front, and Warren has it. Chucky! Crowd responding to Chucky, and now Sean Fox. Good stick check from behind by Dave Desco. Romaldi has it. And Syracuse comes away with it. Desco again. Romaldi it gets it back. The 11 is Mark Moore. John Fox, good job, good job, good job. Scott Zadel, 16. Here comes Joe Reagan. Pair of 26s. Reagan for Hobart. And a pass in close taken away by Tom Nelson. 
Fast break. Get in there. Now Brad Cotts back for the Orangemen. Dave Desco the shot. Syracuse will keep it. <laughs> and the clock now under nine minutes. 8.56 remaining. Syracuse 13, Hobart 10. We knew we'd have a good one today. Certainly has been an outstanding game. Really, all aspects of the game has been well played. Starting off a little raggy early, but they've settled down and played just outstanding lacrosse. The weather has cooperated. We have not had any rain. Todd Curry. And now here's Tom Corey. Corey has four goals in this game, as he did in the first game. He's playing against number 48, Mike Martin, who did a great job in preventing him from getting a clean shot, but too good a job, and he draws the flag. He'll be off for a minute penalty. Martin, a big defenseman, found himself way up on top on the defense, having to confront uh, Corey. And of course, Corey much faster than Martin. And Martin had to result to a lot of stick work in order to slow him down. So again, the Orange will have a man-up situation. The Orange have two goals in that situation to one for Hobart. Friday night at 8, you'll see Syracuse and Cortland State from the Carrier Dome. Now nobody's, the Orange with a man up. Nobody's thinking ahead to that right now, though. Nelson, hard shot and the score from way out. Brad Cotts with a high, hard left-handed shots, and Cotts has his fourth goal of the game. Just let it go in front. Cotts and uh, Corey have been cleaning up in front of the net. He has his fourth. He got three early in the game. In fact, he scored three of the first five for the Orange, and that's a big marker right there. Puts the Orangemen back up by four and quiets down a pretty substantial Hobart rally. We were 13-8 at the end of three, and the Statesman came out and got two early in the third, and or in the fourth, I should say. And, that's a big goal to sway momentum back to the orange side. Syracuse went six and a half minutes without a goal before Cott scored his fourth. And now it's 14 to nine. Bill Bergen down. So is the Syracuse man, Mark Burnham. Now the orange get the ball up quickly. Schmoller off the feet from Nims. John Schmoller coming in left side. He shoots in a save yeah. by Warren. That's it, Chucky. And right in close, they got to watch out for that garbage goal. Here comes Bergen in traffic. Lundblad gets a stick on it. So does Corey. And we got a push, I believe. Yes, it is a push. And Syracuse will keep it. Orange would have been more successful today, Dave, staying away for, from the uh, bounce shot and going straight up high on Warren. He has been very tough to beat off the, uh, off the bounce. He made a tremendous save last time. Well, he's only 5'8", Greg, so I guess when, you're, to the ground. when you're close to the ground, that's the area <laughs> you best defend. Lundblad with a knee brace. Going right-handed on the feed to Burnham. He's got a good angle. He shoots. No, it's a pass to Nelson. And there's a shot. Is it in? Yes. Schmoller. Schmoller off the quick feed from Nelson. John Schmoller with his second goal of the game, and that's where Tim Nelson can dissect you and pick you apart. No, I think the shot, I think you were right in your description. The shot should have been taken earlier, but it wound up uh, better for the Orangemen as they dropped it behind to Nelson. As we'll see it again, there's the pass to Nelson. And the quick one to Schmoller, his second goal of the game. He got, nice away from, got away from number uh, 48 there, Martin, for just a split second, but that's all that Nelson needs. And with that goal, Hobart now down five, has taken a timeout with 7.22 remaining in this game. Mike Martin, the guy you mentioned, number 48, the senior, he has been the guy the Orange have gotten a lot of their goals around his area today. So it's back up to a five-goal lead. Syracuse coming back with the last two goals, Cotts and Schmoller, uh, just 36 seconds apart. Monday night, April 30th, we're back with live Syracuse Chiefs baseball here on Cable 13. We'll have the Chiefs and the Tidewater Ties, the New York Mets top farm club, and you'll see that one at 7.30 here on Cable 13. They lost a lot of their good young arms with the big club in New York, but they should, as always, field a, a pretty good team this year in Tidewater. Let's see, Dwight Gooden has gone up. Dwight Gooden, Darling, Walt Terrell. And the Mets have had a sensational start. And Gooden got racked around pretty well yesterday in Chicago. 
He does throw uh, throw aspirins. He's a <laughs> big fellow. Reminds me a lot of Bob Gibson yeah, when he's he, out there. He pretty well skipped over Triple A ball. Youngster too. Yeah, he's in his uh, early 20s. A lot of those young guys are. Throw the ball hard for Tidewater. John Schmoller comes away with it. We've got seven minutes and 15 seconds left here at Geneva's Boswell Field on the banks of Seneca Lake. Eric Jeske. And now Mark Burnham. Hobart dropping back, trying to pack it in against Syracuse. Vivian is out to play Burnham. Tom Corey to Nelson. Nelson into the slot. Intercepted there by Whalen. That's what Hobart did so effectively early in the game. Denying that entry pass from behind the cage. Now Marty Wood all the way for Hobart. Checked by Schmoller. Hasn't given it up yet. Down he goes. Legal check. Something's not legal there. And they stop it with a whistle. Three Orangemen converged on Marty Wood. Burnham coming back from his midfield slot to help out. We'll see what the referee saw. Walt Munsey on the call, and we'll look at it again. Here's Marty Wood. Get confronted by Schmoller, makes him spin back. Now Burnham comes back to help out. O'Donnell's also there. Look like Schmoller may have gotten him across the face him. mask. So Hobart will keep the ball and start again with O'Hara, number 20. Syracuse is uh, down a man. Corey, Corey is in the penalty off. box. He's been there a lot today. Fifth time he's had a penalty on him. A legal block call on Corey. Now O'Hara, there's that double stack that they use. From behind the cage, Van Arsdale. Nims gathers it in. Grimaldi's going to take a run at the Syracuse player. Hobart needs the ball, and they'll have to pressure Syracuse all over the field. Syracuse leads 15 to 10. Ironically, that was the score of the first game. Here's Whalen again with a steal, and here comes Bergen. Five and a half minutes remaining. Corey separates Bergen from the ball with a nice shoulder check. O'Hara separated by Lundblad. Now Burnham and the Orangemen. Nelson the feed to Corey, and he scores. Oh, what a transition game by Syracuse. 25-yard pass by Nelson right on the money to Corey. Just got a step beyond the Hobart defense, and he broke in on Warren. We'll see it again in replay. This is a tremendous pass by Tim Nelson doing what he does best as he makes the quick one to Corey, and Corey scores again. He's got five goals on the day. Tim Nelson, the surgeon. He really can... Cut you up and pick you apart. Syracuse 16, Hobart 10, and from the sound of the crowd, that has taken a little of the wind out of their sails. Al Catalano, number 49. The crowd definitely uh, has quieted down now. Now well, it's desperation time now for the home team. They got to come full force. They only have 503 to go, and they got to make up six. Hobart on the year began with a loss to Syracuse. Then they defeated Washington College, Geneseo, Cortland, and Ithaca. Now they're down by six, 16 to 10 to Syracuse. Four minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Grimaldi has been held off the scoreboard. Nim stopped it. Here's uh, Van Arsdale, brother of the All-American goalie who took Hobart to four consecutive national championships. Now Grimaldi in close and Nims with a save of the game and he's sitting on the ball in the crease. Nims has been uh, sensational here in the second half. Hobart has only scored uh, four goals in the second half, two in each quarter. Jeff Desco can't handle it initially. Now Nims with room to operate. And he overthrows his man, so Hobart will get it deep in Syracuse territory. Four minutes and four seconds remaining. No attendance figures today, Dave, but they said uh, possibly over five grand. 
And the Statesmen have called the timeout. They really have got to come up with a good idea here for the final 404 to make up six. The way Nims is going in goal, though, that may be a very tough uh, order. He made a simply outstanding save on Grimaldi, who has been quiet today. He came in their top goal scorer. While we have the time, let's run down the scoring for Hobart. Van Arsdale, Reagan, Vivian, Van Arsdale, Bergen, Cal Harris, Devin Arkison, Bergen again, and O'Hara. For Syracuse, we've got five by Corey, four by Cutts. Lundblad has two. Schmoller has two. And Curry and Burnham have one apiece. 16 for Syracuse, 10 for Hobart. Three huddles out on the field now. The Syracuse offense, the Syracuse defense, and the Hobart team. We're going places here on Cable 13, Rogers Cable Systems, formerly Syracuse Cable Systems, Rogers Cable Systems throughout the United States, and into uh, the Republic of Ireland. So Rogers Cable Systems, an international cable company in we are in Geneva, New York today to bring you this traditional matchup between Syracuse and Hobart, the throughway rivalry. Two meetings this year, one down on Long Island and one here in the Finger Lakes. Here is O'Hara trip and a shot is blocked by Nims. And we get another stoppage of play. It is a push technical call against Syracuse. Three minutes now, 56 seconds remaining. That last goal by Syracuse really quieted down the crowd. Van Arsdale, two goals early, nothing since. O'Hara shoots and he scores. And Hobart now trails 16 to 11. O'Hara with his second straight goal. Well, one down, five more to go for Hobart if they have hopes to get back into this game. Nice shot by O'Hara, who seems to have the best shot of all the statesmen in close as he beat Tommy Nims just straight on. Need a few more of those. In an awful hurry, though, just 3.48 to go. Two teams that have orange as their predominant color. Hobart on the left, Syracuse on the right. And right now, five goals separating them with Syracuse in the lead and three minutes, 48 seconds remaining. Here's O'Hara winning it from Cots. Jim Hollihan. Hobart can't afford to take too much time. Hollihan comes in. And looks to pass. Takes himself right out of the play. And Syracuse gets the ball. I'm a little surprised, Greg, that uh, they didn't take the shot from out at the top of the box and play for the rebound or hope the bounce would elude Tom Nims. They got to make up a whole bunch in a short order. They don't seem to be going at it quite as feverishly as they should. Desco changing directions against Bergen. And coming all the way in, and the shot is wide. Syracuse will keep it. Three minutes and nine seconds to play. Here's Tom Corey, the offensive star of the game for Syracuse with five goals. Tom, just a sophomore, a member of the championship team in high school for West Genesee that defeated uh, Yorktown. A legal procedure against Syracuse, so the ball will go back to Hobart now with 2.55 remaining. That may have been a stalling call by Walt Munsey. Syracuse's really only enemy now is the clock. Down to two minutes and 45 seconds. Let it fly now. Marty Wood. See, Syracuse is coming out to take away that long shot also. So they're forcing Harvard, uh, Hobart, that is, to try to go into an inside game. Fred Opie is out there on Mike Bonaventura. Pratt combines with Opie and they separate him from the ball. It just won't give him any shots inside. Here's Grimaldi. Ball hawking. Double team. 
Nice, play nice by strip Desco. job by Jeff Desco. He has played outstanding today. Two times down the field and no shots by Hobart in the last minute. Billy Kerr goes down under a wave of orange jerseys. Arkison goes down, pushed by Corey. I think they got Corey Ford. He really flattened Arkison. And Corey, off. Corey, in a nice gesture of sportsmanship, says uh, he was sorry for that hit against Arkison. This is one Arkison will remember as he'll get popped, really blindsided. Ooh. He was looking behind him for somebody to drop to and get it upfield. And Corey lowered the boom on him. For a Ar big goal scorer, he's got a pretty big hitter also. Plays a physical brand of lacrosse. Arkison would be my choice for the outstanding Hobart player in this game. I think you'd have to share the honor for the Orange Desco on defense along with Nims. Offensively, of course, Corey's play has been simply outstanding. Two minutes and five seconds remaining, and Hobart has taken a timeout. Well, things look fairly secure on the orange side now with just 205 to go and a five goal lead. A outstanding second half performance after we were tied at 6 6 after the first half and 4 4 after the first period. And of course, the orange knocked off North Carolina earlier in the year, Dave, in the first game. But really, this has to rank right up there as one of the more impressive out and he's coming down here playing on this field where they lost two years ago by three and to really play such a strong second half is very encouraging after today's game Syracuse will be playing Cortland at home Colgate at home on the road at Cornell on the road at Rutgers Massachusetts at home and then on the road at Maryland Baltimore County and that will round out the regular season the top eight schools make the playoffs in NCAA lacrosse division one and it's so important for the Orange to go through this season undefeated for then if they can get out of the one or two seed, they would have home field, the Carrier Dome, all the way to hopefully Newark, Delaware in the championship. Randy Lundblad, number 13. The wind now suddenly is picking up here at Geneva. And we're under two minutes to play. Here comes Hobart with one of their last ditch attempts. Arkison has it. Remember, Hobart has not gotten a shot in the last couple of minutes. Credit the good Syracuse defense, the excellent defense. Here's Grimaldi, and there it is again. No shot by Hobart. Dave Desco ahead to Randy Lundblad. A minute and a half to play. Syracuse has this one comfortably in hand. Brad Cotts to Desco. He disdains the shot. Now Nelson. Nelson run off the ball uh, by Warren. Nelson back in there digging, and his brother Tom gets it. And cuts out to Randy Lundblad. Desco still Syracuse isn't taking a shot either. Now we're under a minute with 55 remaining. And now Hobart. Mike Bonaventura, number 14. Shot score by Grimaldi as he beat Nims to the high side for the 12th goal of the game by Hobart and the first by Tom Grimaldi. Well, it's going to be too little and much too late, I think, for the Statesman, but it was a nice play finished off by Grimaldi. The top goal scorer coming in with 16 finally gets on the board on the day after taking the uh, feed from Bonaventura, and they beat Tommy Nims for the 12th time on the day, but the Orange still have the four-goal lead. Score is 16 to 12. Tom Nims uh, coming into this game and only given up 34 goals all season long. An average of less than six a game already here today has given up 12, but he's made countless other saves that have uh, prevented Hobart's total from being higher. 29 points, 29 seconds now in the game. 28 goals have been scored. Saves in the game for Tom Nims. 16. And nine saves in the game made by Chuck Warren. Now here's Tom Corey, 20 seconds to play. And Chuck fires it upfield where it's taken down by O'Hara. O'Hara's had two goals, both of those in the fourth quarter. Hobart really has had only one shot. We're under 10 seconds. One shot in the last three minutes. Two seconds. One. 
And it's all over. That save made after time and run out on the final shot by Randy Lundblad. So it's all over in Geneva. This crowd is applauding the efforts of not only the Hobart statesmen, but also the national champion Syracuse Orangemen. The final score, Syracuse 16 and Hobart 12. Now speaking for Greg Papa, filling in ably today for Dale Dry Poulter. This is Dave Cohen thanking you for being with us here on Cable 13 Sports. The producer of today's game, Bob Jubinville. Syracuse Lacrosse, directed by Gary Mariano. Our technical director, Bill Drew, and our remote supervisor, Andy Swike. Our statistician, as always, Karen Ryan, and the rest of the fine crew from Rogers Cable Systems. Now speaking again for Greg Popper, this is Dave Cohen reminding you to be with us Friday night at 8 when Syracuse hosts Cortland State in the Carrier Dome. Once again, the final score, Syracuse 16 and Hobart 12. This has been a presentation of Cable 13 Sports and Rogers Cable Systems, the leader in local sports programming.